Hello everyone, this is Thursday from Dublin, Ireland. I hope you're all keeping well and thanks so much for our support on my videos, the likes, the shares, comments and thanks to everybody who supports me through buying me a coffee. I'm very grateful. And links to that will be in the comments at the end of this video. Today I want to speak about Michal Martin, Ireland's Minister for Defence, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Tanishta, Revolving Taoiseach and leader of Fianna Fáil, who was on a visit to Washington DC in the United States over the last number of days. And he made a couple of quite interesting speeches, remarks, comments on Ireland and their involvement and drive towards trying to drag Ireland in towards NATO. As uh, he spoke in the Atlantic Council. Now, if people might know the Atlantic Council. That is a supposed to be a cooperation of the United States and Europe that was set up post the Second World War to push government's agendas in those regions and also to push their foreign policy and to push US hegemony and also to push the warmongering machine of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Now the Atlantic Council has many many donors and some of these donors are people like or big corporations like Facebook, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, BlackRock Pfizer, surprise, surprise, Biotech, and also David Petraeus, the ex-head of the CIA, and also another group called the US for Free Syria. Now, I wonder what the purpose of Michal Martin's visit to this Atlantic Council was. Uh, their agenda is essentially to access markets, control markets, and push their hegemony, US hegemony, around the world in terms of pushing the neoliberal agenda and so-called values and democracy around the world and we know how that's going at the moment here in Ireland and across Europe. Now it's interesting as well because if people remember back Joe Biden famously spoke at the Atlantic Council a few years ago where he spoke about sacking the special prosecutor who's due to investigate corrupt shady dealings with Bresma and uh, he wasn't going to offer the funding to Ukraine unless this guy was sacked. He was sacked, and then Joe Biden continued on his merry little plan in Ukraine many years ago. And that's a famous speech that was, it's online, it's readily available about the Atlantic Council with uh, Biden. And Martin also yesterday gave an address to the Atlantic Council and spoke of Ukraine. He spoke in an interview as well about the fact that Ireland were supporting Ukraine, being a neutral country, which goes essentially against our constitution in the context of seeking Pacific settlements to international disputes. But Michal Martin being a good leader for the European bureaucrats and for the warmongers of Washington DC, he spoke to say, Ireland has gladly supported Ukraine through the European peace facility. Now this is a facility that is set up <laughs> not for peace, but for war machines and more weapons. And he said he supplied non-lethal aid to Ukraine to fight the Russian Federation. Now, was not interesting. He said, no, we haven't supplied lethal aid, but actually what they have done, which he didn't say, is that they've supported and provided weapons training to the Ukrainians. As a neutral country, again, a clear breach of neutrality. But I, I'll go on. He also spoke about the 100,000 Ukrainians that have come here because of this war. He didn't speak about the Maidan coup. He didn't speak about the neo-Nazis in Ukraine and the fact that they're funding Nazis in Ukraine. He didn't speak about the corrupt Alensky regime. No, he didn't. Uh, he, of course, he was trying to bow down to his masters in the Atlantic Council. And he said about the 100,000 Ukrainians, he said it's 2% of the total population. We've seen the chaos that's created in Irish society because of the pressures that are put on services, because of his, his government's policies and the neoliberal model of the European Union. And he also spoke about giving humanitarian aid to Ukraine. And it went on again as Martin was trying to placate his masters and the military industrial complex and the warmongers. And he said, Ireland have specific vulnerabil vulnerabilities. And he said it's around cybersecurity and maritime undersea cables. <laughs> Is that interesting? So uh, we've heard this over the last period of time in Ireland, a part of this joint consultative forum and security forum that he brought in in Ireland to try and erode our neutrality that was held last year up to 
many members of NATO, many members of military industrial complex attended as well, trying to erode the triple lock, which essentially means that we need a UN Security Council mandate plus government approval and parliament approval here before we send more than 12 troops into any overseas mission. But again, they're trying to drive us towards more militarism with the European Army and with NATO as well, and spend more and more money profiting the big guys like BlackRock and the military industrial complex as well. And it's interesting as well because uh, during that he spoke about PESCO also as well, which is another battle group moving towards militarization. He said we, we should be working on more stronger collaboration to work on our defense capabilities to warn against hybrid attacks. And why is this important? Because what he's looking at now and talking about is misinformation. He said we have to guard against misinformation and disinformation. Isn't this interesting? Now we can start connecting the dots <laughs> to what's really going on in society. You see all the other laws coming through, the EU Digital Services Act, hate speech laws, so forth as well. So this is what it is, an attack on free speech, essentially. So they're claiming, which is misinformation. He also spoke about the partnership for free with NATO. He said we need a tailored program with them. And also he said about the funding package going into Ukraine. There's an interest in actually the partnership for peace with NATO. It's a bit of a, <laughs> it's a bit, uh, uh, moronic to say the least, uh, peace with a war machine called NATO. Uh, it's a bit remarkable. But Ireland have been a member of this so called Partnership for Peace since 1999 and uh, provide funding into that uh, Partnership for Peace as well, which is the same as the European Peace Facility, which has just been used uh, to be raided, as Joseph Burrell said recently, for more weapons for Ukraine. Hence, US hegemony. And this is what it's all about. So uh, he spoke about the 50 billion euros being given over four years in the budget that he spoke about in the previous video, more money going into Ukraine. And he also spoke about the 5 billion on this European peace facility that's being given out. And he said it's very important for the reconstruction of Ukraine. Now we can connect it. Funders of the Atlantic Council, BlackRock, big corporations, JP Morgan, who's going to profit from the reconstruction? You guessed it, BlackRock, JP Morgan, the 1%. So uh, it's all about money for these guys, all about selling out our sovereignty for Michal Martin. And it's all about trying to uh, bow down to his masters in Washington, D.C. Michal Martin was also asked questions on the defence capabilities of Ireland. And it's also interesting because he said they're fully supportive of the European Union defence industry and spoke that the European Commission are pushing these policies through to have more standardised and more coordinated efforts across the European Union. And he also spoke about Ireland only known as a peacekeeping force. And it was interesting because recently I've spoken videos, you look back on them regarding the involvement of the military industrial complex with Ireland and trying to sell more weapons into Ireland. NATO has said that countries should increase their spending up to 2% of GDP. Ireland currently, they're looking to push that into uh, more weapons for Ireland and more countries are doing deals such as the Czech Republic that I spoke about recently in a video that you, maybe you can look back on as well and he also said that it, it provides capacity and building for Ireland and we need greater integration and he spoke of the involvement of Poland involved in the UNIFIL mission the United Nations uh, mission in Lebanon currently where there's coordinating efforts and of course he said they're fully support of the international rules-based order <laughs> this is the one that the US have made up uh, it's basically their own rules. Nobody knows what they are, but whatever we say goes in terms of our agenda. So also in the context of this, it's important to note uh, the European Union. Michal Martin uh, spoke when he spoke of Ukraine previously, he spoke about defending Ukraine's sovereignty. But he also said hypocritically about Ireland's sovereignty that it was a backward looking idea. Now, if you put this in the context of the hypocrisy, Pulham Oily coming from these leaders, it really puts into contrast what they should be standing up for, the interest of the people of Ireland, but they're not. They're more interested in siding up to the warmongers and the 1% than the interests of the ordinary people. And use the language of sovereignty when they're actually the complete opposite of sovereignty. When you consider what's happening in our society with the immigration chaos and all the other chaos where there's no community sovereignty involved in any decision making process and people aren't listened to with their genuine and legitimate concerns to what's going on in society. So it's very important as well, as I said, that he said that the European values are used as a touchstone and outreach. And he says, Ireland, go out, visit African states and speak to them about supporting Ukraine. It's not interesting. Ireland go and do the dirty work in their diplomacy, under the guise of diplomacy. 
to try and get the Global South to side with Ukraine. It's not working very well, Michal, but uh, this is what he's doing, doing the dirty work on their diplomatic missions, the dirty work of the warmongers. And it's also interesting as well because they're using this soft power in the current uh, Paddy State Junkers are due to come up over the next number of weeks as well. We'll see all that happening and uh, this soft power will be used most certainly during those discussions with many of these countries, uh, which are many of them probably tell them where to go, I'm sure. Uh, and he also spoke about the, as I said, sovereignty. But it's important to know where the European Union offices are, Commission offices are, uh, right across the street from NATO offices in Brussels. So where does one start? Where does one end? Who knows? They're quite similar in my uh, eyes. But this is what Ireland are moving towards. This is what the Irish government wants to move towards more militarism, to move towards the European army, uh, to move towards attacking free speech. And it's all interconnected to what's really going on in Irish society with all the chaos and the chaotic policies pursued by the policies that's actually creating huge issues in our society. But he's also met with a US aid as well, Samantha Power in Washington DC, where he's US aid again, always make humanitarian interventions. And we all know about the US's humanitarian interventions, don't we? Uh, look at them, many countries, Iraq, <laughs> Serbia, how many more so-called humanitarian interventions was there? And uh, it's also interesting to know that he had a meeting as well with another warmonger over there, uh, Lindsey Graham of the Republican Party. The vast majority of Democrats are overwhelmingly supporting this proxy war in Ukraine. Many of the uh, Republicans are. There is a bit of pushback, obviously, in Congress at the moment, the delay in the money getting forwarded to Ukraine, uh, because we know what's happening on the ground in terms of the context of the war. Uh, but the truth is being told to people here in Ireland, and it's very important that people know the truth to what's going on. Uh, and incidentally, Michal Martin and the Irish government Politicians have only sat for eight days in total since it all has resumed since Christmas. So uh, he's more interested in flying off to Washington DC, meeting the Atlantic Council, meeting USA and Samantha Power warmongers, uh, then standing up for the interests of people and trying to sell Ireland off to the highest bidder, like it's always been done in Irish society, to the multinationals, to the globalists, to the 1%, and now the military industrial complex. So uh, thanks for supporting my work. And please press like to my Facebook page, YouTube channel, please press subscribe so you get notified when my videos come up. And also please uh, follow me on TikTok and X as well. And thanks very much for the support. We need people to stand up for the interests of Ireland. Irish democracy, Irish independence, Irish neutrality is vital. And beyond that, we uh, definitely need to have a real say in the destination and the needs of our country in the context of what's going on, the impending crises that we face day by day, with so many of them facing us day by day. But then the 1% and the governments and the politicians are more interested in going off and meeting these guys and representing the interests of ordinary people. So thanks for all the support of my videos and take care. Talk to you all soon. Bye bye.